Morning, Squid Schoolers. We're back and ready for another edition of Map Mode of the Bay. This time, it's going to be Kelp Dome Rainmaker, which has been chosen for us by our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like some input on which map modes we do first, I give that right to my patrons on Patreon. Link in the description if you would like to support the channel. I would really appreciate it because it's what's going to potentially help me do this full time, which I would love to do. That support goes a long way towards making that happen. If you can't support on Patreon, but would like to help us out, at least drop a like and a subscription to the channel. Would hugely appreciate that, and that would help us keep growing. So thank you very much. Let's get on with the show here. As always, we're going to talk about the objective line to start with. It's relatively simple in this map mode. There are really only so many options because there's so many big walls. This is not going to be like Moray, where you have like seven different ways that the Rainmaker could potentially get to the goal. It's really just going to be one of two ways, and there are a couple of little nuances to how you can make that happen, um, but it's fairly basic. Rainmaker is going to start here, and so if this is our base, then we have two options. One is to go across these grates and come down this way, the goal. And the other one is going to just be to come around here. There is the option to path the Rainmaker up this wall and take it over the grates, which can be advantageous in some situations. But you're going to have to control the same space that you are making this push anyway. So it really doesn't make that huge of a difference. These are basically the only objective lines that we have to worry about. Makes it a lot simpler, but it doesn't make it simpler to get in, because this is the single worst choke point in the entire game. It is so, so, so disadvantageous for a player on either side of this line to approach the other team. It's so hard for the Rainmaker to be able to swim in this way without being shot from here, without being shot from here, without someone peeking out around the side of this cover, without someone being over here. There are so many good defensive positions there. But if anybody here shows their faces, they either have to drop through this grate and make themselves extremely visible, they have to push through this tiny little corridor that everyone is already looking at, or, and one of the strongest defensive options in this map mode, they have to flank from this side. Now, this is the strongest thing that you can do defensively to start pushing the enemy team back, pair this kind of push with specials. But because it's so strong, you're going to have somebody who knows what they're doing looking at it. And so you can't just expect to go in here by yourself and get something done. It typically ends up being a really big stalemate until someone finally goes down and the momentum is able to swing one way or the other. Now the team with the Rainmaker, if they're on the right hand side here, they can really pitch a tent here. Um, because for one thing, they can keep funneling people into this area from uncontestable territory, or at least much more difficult to contest territory. The, the other team would have to send someone flanking all the way around here to be able to stop these players from getting back to this location, which is generally not going to happen because you're going to want everyone defending. So it's relatively easy to either jump people in to behind this solid wall or to just swim people in over these grates or this ramp. You can kind of just keep getting reinforcements here. If someone gets picked, Rainmaker can kind of just back up behind the wall, behind this pillow, keep looking and keep firing shots and make it really, really difficult for people to get in. Meanwhile, you have someone sitting right behind the wall giving a jump and somebody gets in there and you're back to square one. So flushing this whole area out can be really important as the defending team to make sure that that push doesn't just keep going indefinitely. One really useful defensive tactic that you have if the Rainmaker gets to, say, here on the objective line. Pushing it back out this way, like we just established, is going to be a huge pain in the butt and very, very likely to fail. But you don't have to get it out in that direction. You can actually take the risk of bringing it closer to your goal as long as you've got this area cleared out for yourself. And then you can get it out one of two ways. You can either drop it down over the middle or you can drop it down over this side. 
The top side is the more common push. It has some advantages. For one thing, when you, as soon as you get it down here, even if you die right away, the Rainmaker is as far away for the opponents from a nice push for them to start as it possibly can be. Um, they have to get it all the way to mid and then, you know, approach one of the objective lines again. It's a very long push and you can get there from territory that you're very likely to control on your side. Now, it is a little bit risky coming this way in that if an opposing player is right here and stops you, this push right here is really, really quick and you need players in position to be able to defend against that pretty fast if that does get stopped in that direction. So usually you want to rotate your whole team over there. Going over this way gets you uh, f a little bit closer to a good push for the enemy team. Um, they're just a little bit closer to getting back into that same choke point. It's not v that much further away though. And the big advantage of going over in this direction is that you're committing less hard to going in this direction. You have access to both the mid push and the right side push from that position. Whereas if you're going over here and then you decide to rotate it, rotate it all the way back to mid, you're, you're losing a lot of time doing that. Um, so it's situational. If you can get over the top fast enough, then I would recommend probably going out the middle. But if somebody is chasing you and you just need to get it further away from the goal, this way might be safer, defensively speaking, to uh, just kind of reset the situation, get it down there, maybe maintain lead if you still have it, and uh, force the enemy team to rotate to the complete opposite end of the map to regain control of the objective. Let's talk about weapon rolls. Slayers and skirmishers. You guys have a tough job here because you have to breach one of the worst defensive strongholds in the game in th that location right there. Let's change colors a little bit while we talk about this. This area right here sucks to push into. It is very, very difficult. You got to get around this basically blind corner somehow or you flank in from the left hand side. And those are your only two options, really. You could maybe if you're like a brush or something, push in over this grate but you can all but guarantee that there is going to be someone in this position. And so unless you have some kind of range over them, maybe you're like a rapid blaster and you can poke them out or something, that's just not an advantageous fight to take a lot of the time. But for the most part, you know, pushing into the enemy base is just a matter of, you know, getting a lucky bomb, putting some specials over in the right place, waiting for a flank to come through on the other, other side. What can work though, is if the Rainmaker is firing good shots to clear this area out, and you feel fully confident that there is not going to be someone in that position, if you sit right here and time your for forward push with when those shots are going off, that can kind of disguise you on your way in and you can start zipping around and using this piece of cover and making yourself a lot more annoying to remove than you would be otherwise. Um, so that's basically kind of what you're hoping for. You're hoping either for a special that displaces people and distracts them, or you're waiting for some really good cover fire to put the players that you know are in your way out of position. When you do get into this area, uh, you know, a short range zippy weapon can really use this cover super well. You definitely want to use this wall to your advantage. Uh, people up here, especially backline players, are going to have a much harder time shooting you if you're underneath this wall, and that can be a way that you isolate players in the fight. So that's a great way to play it. Um, you can, in theory, paint up this wall, and as long as you're able to get up there, you can take this position and have height advantage looking down. Um, this is a little bit less useful for a short-ranged weapon, but if you're able to maybe set up a longer-range weapon to meet you over the top this way by clearing this, then that can be worth doing. Um, and it can also just be worth doing if everyone is maybe down here about and you want eyes on them coming, you want to be able to put bombs in their way. Um, this is also a great spot to inkjet from. Inkjet is one of those specials that really can help you break the stalemate on this map because if you inkjet from anywhere along here, you can get up over the top of this wall and have shots on people in all of the biggest defensive positions. You can hit this spot, you can hit this spot, you can hit something over here, you can clear this out if you've got a you know good enough lead on your shots. That can be the kind of chaos that your team needs to be able to break in there. So. 
that's something that I really like bringing on this map. And like I've said a couple of times, make sure that you're keeping this flank route in mind. Um, if you're, you know, way over here, don't rotate all the way across the map to get there. But maybe if you're spawning in, consider, you know, if your team has been stalling pretty well, going over here and trying to take this position and start to pinch them. Because uh, if there really is just a stalemate here and you can't get through, that could be something that, you know, pulls people off the Rainmaker. And you don't necessarily need to go in and go for kills here. What you could do is run in, engage a player or two, but then run backwards and force them to look at you behind the Rainmaker pedestal, where they are, because they're looking this way, not paying enough attention to the Rainmaker, and the other side is able to get a 3v2 push and get some good points. So those kinds of plays are definitely invaluable if you can get people there in a good amount of time. Um, but if you're taking too long getting over here, it's probably worth it for you to just get back with the rest of your team. Supports. Supports, again, you're using your specials. You're using uh, paint especially. Paint is really important on this map because it can enable you to make fast break pushes if you get the opportunity. Also remember that you could just be keeping bombs on this position and preventing anyone from getting through and that that's probably a better use of your time a lot of the time than trying to go someplace else and paint someplace else. Really the time that you want to be painting more is when you go back into the neutral game, maybe the Rainmaker he's reset, maybe it's in mid somewhere and nobody has full control over it, and at that point in time you really need to be starting to take back some space in these areas to make it safe for your frontliners to start aggressing and pushing back on the objective line. As the Rainmaker carrier, you have some actually nasty things that you can do on both of these routes. So. First of all, uh, there is a block here that's very difficult to see, but it is there. This block right here is a beautiful piece of cover for you. It's very hard for much at all to be able to hit you behind this block. If something is trying to push around, you can always back up behind the pillow. If something's pushing you there, you can always back up behind the wall. Um, always, always, always be watching for this flank. That is a big risk because your defensive position depends on the line, uh, the battle line basically being very narrow. Um, so if somebody starts to open up your formation from here, that's something that you want to put a shot down on and uh, cut off right away. You can get Rainmaker shots to cover this area. You can get Rainmaker shots to cover this area. Something really nasty you can do, because you're hitting up over the top of a wall anyway, is fire a shot straight up into the air so that it falls down slowly and then fire another one straight forward so that they land at almost exactly the same time. That sort of thing is really good for clearing out this area right here um, so that you don't get sharking weapons right up around the corner. Um, and that sort of thing can clear this out really well for your frontliners to be able to push in and start doing stuff. Otherwise, once you get over here, it's relatively straightforward. You want to make sure to clear this area out. Um, and a quick tip, of course, Always use the Rainmaker pedestal for cover. So wherever you're getting shot at from, it's often going to be from spawn, but it might be from other locations. Just try to ride up the pedestal on the opposite side from there so that these players aren't going to have shots on you until you're like right up over the top of the pedestal. Then going to the left-hand side, there's a really interesting niche play that you can make here. Standing from about this position on the grate, if you fire a fully charged shot so that it lands right about here, just over the wall, this will do a few things for you. One, it'll paint this trail right here, so you have all the paint that you need to get around the corner. Two, it'll paint all the way around. And three, it'll paint the side of the Rainmaker pedestal. In theory, if you just pick it up and walk straight to the grates and get to this position, you can KO the Rainmaker having only fired one shot with it. Obviously, that is presuming that there is no defense. If there is a charger up here, if there's somebody below you, left-hand side is absolutely not safe to take. It is one of the most exposed positions in the entire game to be right on this spot. You've got someone with range advantage who could hit you from this place. Anybody underneath you has the advantage because they have better movement underneath and you're also forced to stay in human form, so you're a larger hitbox than they are when they're swimming around. It's a very, very good push to take as long as you can get to about here. 
If you can get there safely and you don't die on route, then you're in business. But the whole path from here to here is so dangerous that you don't go there unless you already have some full knowledge that this area below you has been cleared out and that uh, there isn't anybody immediately in this position to stop you. Backline. This is a pretty solid backline map. There are a lot of positions that you can take that are good defensively. Um, obviously, there is always the difficulty with a backline weapon that you're going to have trouble rotating. You need to be able to move back and forth across the map if the other team is switching up which objective line they're taking. So you need positions that either cover both directions that they could go or that allow you to rotate faster than they do. Now, there are some opportunities to do that. Uh, this position right here gives you a lot of control over mid. It lets you rotate to this direction if the Rainmaker goes that way. And if it's going this way, you actually, as a charger, have line of sight on the grates from here. And you can just shoot someone off of that. So this isn't a terrible position for you to take. That's something where, uh, as long as you're, you know, hitting your shots on the players on grates, this can kind of help you hold it down. This position is really strong defensively for watching this direction. You just have to watch out for flanks or for people who get down underneath you right here. And uh, one thing that I will say in particular since Devi has been informing us about our positioning on this map, this is one of the strongest Hydra maps in the entire game. Um, it is so nasty what a Hydra Splatling can do up on top of these grates. A Hydra can completely lock down an, an entire side of the map. You cannot exist on the entire left-hand side of the map. Um, and that's still kind of true if they get up into this position. Now, the fact that the grates don't go over this way is a huge nerf to the Hydra on this particular mode. Because they can't advance into mid as quickly, because they can't rotate as fast with the Rainmaker, it's a little bit less advantageous because of it. But Respect the Hydra's range. If you don't know where the Hydra is, be very careful which corners you peek, be very careful which sight lines you allow yourself to maneuver into, um, because they can see an awful lot of the map, and they're already going to be using the run speed to get across the grates, just because they're a splatling. They can be great Rainmaker carriers on this mode, because the weapon itself synergizes really well with the run speed that you need to get over the grates, um, so you're more likely to see something like a Hydra trying to actually push up over the top like this uh, with the support of its team. Key positions. So in mid, the opposing team is likely to have dropped at least a, a player or two over here. So that's something to always be worried about. This is the primary place people are going to try and pop the Rainmaker from. You're typically going to see back lines come out maybe here or here. They might come up over here at the start, and so be watching for those positions. Um, typically, it is going to be safer to be on this side of mid, if this is your spawn. Because from this side of mid, you are shielded from those backline positions by mid itself. Um, it's only really this one that you have to worry about, and that is a relatively limited sight line because of the cover that's around it. Once you start pushing, one of the first things to check is, is there any enemy paint in this direction? If there's not, if nobody went out that way, then this can absolutely just be a really quick push, and you're going to get points faster going that way, especially if you can get down on the ground, than you are going to going to the right. Um, you, you get to here, and I think that's about 57, um, and you need to get like into the choke point on the right-hand side to get those kinds of points. You want to make sure that you are able to get to this position at all if you're going to take that route anyway. So you're already getting some pretty decent points. And also, if you're able to drop it through and have it maybe right here and you get some teammates in front of you, even if there is someone defending, you have a whole lot of cover to use. It's difficult for them to push into this because they are only able to access this area through this obvious choke point right here. Whereas you guys can come through this lane, from this lane, from this lane, and it's a lot more difficult for them to spot where you are than it is for you to spot where they are. If you're taking the right side push, this is a position where you're very likely to see a backliner or midliner. 
They have a lot of line of sight over this area below them here. So make sure that you're respecting that as the pushing team. Make sure that uh, if you have a position where you can, you're shooting up through the grates and painting this up a little bit to force them back. Um, throwing bombs up there is also a very good idea if you have somebody that you need to displace for a short period of time. Of course, this area right here is really dangerous uh, for the attacking team because if somebody's sharking right here and you walk around a blind corner you get splatted now the rainmaker should be doing their best to try and clear that and this should be getting bombarded pretty hard by specials and bombs and things like that as you try to come around but uh there's a reason that you need that much cover fire um to clear that spot because if people are able to come at you from both directions here it's just way too disadvantageous to push around blindly Again, using this wall is really important if you're pushing up so that you can be safe from players trying to spawn in. If you hug, hug this wall all the way around, you get from about here to about here without anybody from spawn really being able to see you or interact with you unless they have like a roller or uh, a bucket or something. So that's a really strong position to take to kind of worm your way in and make sure you get to the goal safely. Also, consider the side of this perch can actually be painted right here. So, for example, if you've got players backed up here trying to defend and you're trying to clear them out so that the Rainmaker can move through here, you can climb up the side of this wall, run across the top and either shoot down at them or jump down at them and have a different angle on them than just running straight at them from the front. This is also a really useful piece of movement tech for getting it out into mid quicker if it ends up being like right here and you're the defending team. Finally, the last one we'll talk about is this area right here. If the Rainmaker has been successfully defended and players are now moving it out this way, this area right here is a huge kill zone. Drop bombs on this spot, drop bombs on this spot, paint as much of this as you possibly can so that you catch them while they're trying to push up in front of the Rainmaker. Where else are they gonna go, right? If the whole team was bottled up on in this direction, you can expect that most of them are going to come this way. Now, it's really smart in this position to move around here, drop through this crate, and then come this way to help support so that your team isn't all dropping in exactly the same direction. You could also put someone into mid and come around this way, but uh, typically, the Rainmaker is going to want to drop it down pretty quickly, so you don't have a ton of time to make a push like that. So if you're going to do that, make sure you do it decisively and uh, make sure you've got at least a little bit of information on what's going on in mid so that you, you don't get sharked and give your teammates now a 3v4 to drop into on this side instead of a 4v4. If you are able to control this position as the attacking team going this way, you're in really good shape because... Any push that they make, you can kind of eat the pressure for as long as you've got paint in this area. If you're the support and you're not on the Rainmaker, keep as much of this painted as you possibly can because your team needs the mobility. The way that they beat missiles on this spot, the way that they beat a Stingray on that spot, is by having paint at their feet to move around and dodge around. If they lose that paint and the opposing team can actually start whittling down the options for where they can stand, that's when you start to lose this location. If I am pushing around in this direction, and there could be someone here, 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 or here, or even up top, I don't know where I'm looking. But if this whole area is painted for my team, I know that the only places they can exist are either here or maybe up top on the block. So I can look more in this direction. I can focus my attention and have a better likelihood of being able to pre-fire someone who's being flushed out of this direction by a bomb. I have a better chance of being able to have the information I need to win fights. Main goals. On this map, it's really pretty straightforward which directions you're going to push. There's not a lot of nuance. If you think you have the option to get across this grate without getting shot from somebody in this direction, then you go to the left because the left gives you a very fast push straight to the goal once you get to about this location. 
and it's going to force a massive defensive rotation. They have to come all the way around here, and they have to come through this very, very narrow corridor in order to get to you. So as soon as you've got even one player helping you get there, very high likelihood you're going to be able to win a fight. Um, and even if you don't, if you get it to just the corner here, which is a relatively safe position from someone who's trying to come around in this direction, this is already getting you into the 20s. Um, and you're so close to the goal. It just takes one pick. It just takes one player out of position um, to be able to get yourself there. So go for this if you are able to. But if this is getting shut down, then just go to the right and, you know, wait. And be very, very patient as the Rainmaker Carrier. Shoot a bunch of shots. Flush people out. Let the specials roll in. Let your frontliners get out there in front of you. There's no need to rush into this corridor and just die and give the other team a numbers advantage they can use to finally break the stalemate. That's really about all there is to it. It is a relatively simple Rainmaker map. In that It really only does have those two options. And the way that you're going to succeed on those two options is by either splatting the opponents or just clearing them out, displacing them, forcing them to rotate in the wrong direction and going in the direction that they're not defending as well. Use specials if you need to to break through the choke point, but also if you get a fast break, don't think that you need to just wait around for more help, you know, go for that lead, go for those winning points. Always, 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 like I've said, try to win the game on that push. So if you're pushing into the enemy base and you think you have the opportunity to get some more points after you've earned yourself the lead, go for it. See if you can get that a little bit extra more. Make Ratchet the opponent's difficulty of winning the match up just a little bit harder. But also, if you have teammates in front of you, Give your teammates some time to create that advantage for you. No need to rush blindly into the enemy team when there are teammates in front of you that could have pushed up for you. Because the surest way to win the game is by KOing. Some pushes, you know, seem like they're going to be winning pushes and then they have this funny way of reversing on you. So play hard, keep playing all the game through, don't let up and give up map control just because you have a lead, and good luck out there. Thanks for watching Map Mode of the Day. Again, if you appreciated this, please give a like and subscribe to the channel. And consider supporting on Patreon so that you can get input on which map mode we do next. We have a bigger and bigger growing list of options as I'm able to collect more and more ranked footage. So you'll have more of an ability to give input to get the map mode that you want uh, to be the first one in my inbox to work on. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.